what's up everybody welcome 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 this is straightforward with miss b and welcome back man welcome back to um the podcast as you know how we get started around here just grab your vices chill and we about to get into some things you know we're gonna keep it live raw and direct and today I have a a guest, I guess you would call it a uh, co-host of mine that is here today. And um, he's going to join us and, and talk about some things. But welcome to my homeboy, my friend for a, for a very, very, very long time. Um, I got AG. What's up, G? What's up? Hey, man, how y'all doing out there in the world? <laughs> y'all hear that country accent? He's straight from Birmingham. Birmingham, Beeham, Alabama. That's how we used to say it back in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah, and love every minute of that. Love it. Right. Love so, it down here. Yeah, so if you guys have, you know, you're not familiar with people from the South that have very uh, strong dialects. Um, yeah. So, you know, he's going to be here, and um, he's a, a country boy, a true country boy, but he's my friend, and like I said, this podcast, I want to, you know, just kind of give, you know, people an opportunity that is, you know, just our good, good uh, law-abiding citizens, you know, regular people out here in the world that is... um you know, doing good for themselves and keeping them and themselves, their families afloat also just giving them an opportunity as well. And, you know, as you know, some of you may know, you know, I, I like to talk shit and I talk shit most of the times with my friends. So I want to bring my friends on here. So, yeah. So let's get started. Let's get started. All right. So usually, um, you know, talk about my weekend and I don't know what you had going on this weekend, AG. But for me, I didn't really have a lot. I did get the opportunity. It wasn't on this weekend. It was more like earlier part of this week. Celebrated a friend of mine's birthday. So happy birthday, Kim, if you hear this. Love you so much. And Kim also um, went to uh, college with us at Alabama State. And and you said what? You, you guys grew up together, right? Uh, well, you could say that. No, when she was my next door neighbor, you know, one of them next door neighbors, you just see them when they come home at, at night. Oh, my <laughs> God. <stay> <laughs> so was Kim coming home at night or was you coming home at night? Um, Both of us. I mean, not coming home at night. We talking about the families. Like, oh, okay. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, she didn't go to school with me or anything. They just moved over there and she might go to school on another side of town. You don't go to the neighborhood school, you know. Oh, but we're, okay. So we didn't actually grow up with each other, but we did know each other because we stayed next door to each other. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, that's cool. Well, y'all, you know, it's, I always liked people from Birmingham for some reason. You guys, you know, just, I don't know, it's just something about oh, y'all that team, I like. You ain't going to get no better. Child, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what you now want, you hyping, now you hyping it up for your city, but I get it, I get it, I get it. You gotta, you gotta stay down to where you come from. So I understand that. Um, my weekend, like I said, I Kim's birthday. Um, what else did I get? Oh, I had to get always got things around the house that I need to do and, and stuff like that. And I don't know how it is with you and your wife um, or your wife, but sometimes it'd be certain things that I want to have organized in my house. And so this past weekend, I wanted to organize my wigs. That sounds like a whole lot. No, it wasn't a lot. <laughs> Because I have been keeping, you know, I, you know, I have my wigs that I get from like, um, well, first of all, people, I like to change up my hair a lot. I like to wear wigs. I have my own hair. That's not a problem, but I just like to have that variety and wigs make it so easy. Wigs and weaves just make it so easy for a woman to just kind of change and switch up their look. 
And so, yeah, I wanted to make sure my wigs and stuff was just housed, you know, neat and organized. So I went to Target and I bought like these plastic containers um, to put my wigs in. So you ain't got them sitting on the little mannequin thing like my wife got. She got the little doll. No, I wigs. no. At first, I did. I have at least about four or five of those little mannequin heads, and I would have <laughs> I would have my wigs, especially my expensive ones. Right, um, I would have my wigs sitting on them um, for a while, but then I said, "Okay, this this is gonna give me nightmares. All these little mannequin wigs, <laughs> mannequin <laughs> wigs sitting around here." <laughs> So I was like, let me do something else. Then I put the wigs, you know, I have like these little plastic bags that I will put them in. Um, like I said, you when you spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on like herring and getting wigs made, you definitely want to keep them, you know, you want to keep them stored properly so that they can just maintain its life and and last a long time so i said yeah let me take them out the mannequin heads put them in these plastic bags but now the, the plastic bags was too much so i said let me let me go ahead and you know buy officially buy some containers to put them in so that's what i went i made a trip to target of course with target you end up buying all kind of other shit that you you, you definitely did not need to have so um <clears throat> So that's pretty much all I did was just did some organization work this okay. weekend. So what else you what what else you had going on? Well, you know, down here in the country, we don't have an NBA team. We got a G League team. So I went to the G League game this um Friday night. Mm-hmm. We lost, but we still got a team though. You know, <laughs> and this is like a basketball team. Yeah, it's like the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We got they um, B team. It's, <laughs> got it's it. called the G League, but it's the B team. I got it. I got it. I think okay. want to say like two. Don't you? I believe two chains invest in like a G League team here, if I'm not mistaken. But I could yeah. be wrong. I could be wrong. Well, that sounds good. Um, and interesting. Well, yeah, Saturday, man. I. I I'm still crying now because them Buffalo Bills, man, them folks so sorry. They can sit there and watch Patrick Mahomes come back and beat them with 13 seconds, man. Oh, wow. I've been, I've been crying since Saturday. Oh, no, that was Sunday. I've been oh. crying since Sunday. Oh, goodness. Dang. Yeah. yeah, I didn't catch up. I mean, you know, you be on social media and you see people talking about, you know, football games, and I kind of just catch the clips here and there, but – um, I yeah, I didn't get an opportunity to sit down and, and watch that. I, I haven't even been to like a football game in a while that I need to go ahead and I said I wanna, you know, start doing that again, but you know, with the pandemic and the COVID, it's like I I'd be so afraid. My anxiety just kinda just you know, go crazy just thinking about being around a lot of people like that. So I, that's why I really haven't been to like, you know, major functions, big places like that <clears throat> yet because of COVID. And when I do stuff like that, I usually be to forget about the pandemic until I get there. <laughs> oh, God. Get there right in, you like, like, wait a minute. <laughs> right. I'm like around 15, 20,000 people right now. Everybody coughing and laughing and gagging and drinking oh, beer and spitting and exactly. oh. <laughs> That's the way it was. We had uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was the whole situation. When you coming up with like fifteen thousand people in there, I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of people. <laughs> oh wow! Wow, yeah. yeah. Some people with their masks on, some people not. Mm-hmm. So mm. you know, it's to each his own. Is that, Cat Williams still not. funny? He is so funny yeah, to he, me. Yeah, he's still funny, and I think he might have had some new material. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, he has some new material. Oh, Cat Williams. So he, it's crazy how he he still be out doing his thing, but he just be so low key with it. Like you know, he try to stay, stay out the media for the well, most he part. Need to. You don't think he need to? Hey, I mean, I'm yeah, it saying. does seem like every time he in the media, it's it's because of some craziness. Hey, I was saying he was on triple probation. 
<laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I want triple probation. I got probation three different states." Oh wow! He said, he said "I got a ankle, I ankle break on both legs and one on my wrist." <laughs> 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 that yeah, day yeah. fucking Cat Williams ass is crazy. Who is your favorite comedian? My favorite comedian. That's kind of uh Eddie Murphy off top shit. Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor, because those motherfuckers going at it. Yeah, it's I gotta like... be one of them old school people, yeah. Yeah, I like Eddie Murphy. Uh, let me see. My favorite would probably be well. I always like Martin Lawrence. Oh yeah, I'm but not necessarily for stand up, but more for, of course, the show. You know, the right. Martin show used to be on TV. Um, Dave Chappelle is my favorite, of course. Dave Chappelle's yeah. my favorite. I like Chris Rock too. Um. Uh oh, no, I'm not. I'm not the fondest of uh Kevin Hart. He just don't. He just don't do yeah. it for me. <laughs> yeah, now sometimes it, it's funny, and sometimes it ain't. Right, it's like, like playing a part. <laughs> yeah, I'm like uh, I don't know. So I'm trying to think of like female, female comedians. Um. Hmm. What's that later on? Some more used skinny. to be funny to me. Well, some more was funny, but I don't it's really the, see her much. The real dog skinny lady who used to do all the cussing and in the in the fucking jokes. Mm, not Cheryl Underwood. Is that it might be the Cheryl one Underwood. that's on the talk show? It sound like her dog skinny with the gap teeth, always talking nasty. That might have been Cheryl Underwood. Ain't she a... Uh, like. Yeah, let's find out who she is. Because I don't know. I think that's who it is, though. Because it was a couple of dark-skinned ones. Um, Oh, I like I love Lunel. Lunel is oh. the heavy set. Oh, yeah, she was on another chair. And she the is chair. hilarious. Man, that lady got a chair. Sit down. <laughs> because she just had surgery she had surgery yeah. recently on her knee i think knee replacement or something because <clears throat> i follow her on um instagram but i love i love lunia yeah she's funny too yeah all the ladies pretty much do a good job um let's see tiffany haddish she's she like uh, Kevin Hart to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just me. Yeah, she yeah, she, she has. Yeah, she 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 giving off those Kevin Hart vibes for yeah, sure. She she's not. Sometimes. She's not that funny to me either. Um. Yeah. But anyway, I like some white um comedians as well. I just can't. They can't come to mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think like I like I'm trying to think of people you know that's white or just of another race that does stand up like most of the white people I like are from like movies and television shows like Will Farrell he is hilarious to me in movies I love Will Farrell mm-hmm. I like him too um who else I like um the dude from Seinfeld. Seinfeld. I forgot his name. It's somebody else. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. All right. So, <clears throat> let me clear my. I forgot to put in my little segue music. Oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot my segue music, but that's okay. That is quite all right. You got the top of shit. Right. It don't matter. I'll I'll figure it out. And um, yeah, I'll figure it out (laughs) by the time we get to the next the next uh podcast episode. But yeah. So anyway, the big news that's been going on going on this week. Is the um, top? I mean, Natasha K and Cardi B 
federal case that has been ringing bells on the internet for the past two weeks um, that this particular trial has been going on. And I thought it would just be um, a good topic for us to discuss and just kind of give our, uh, just give our thoughts on um, not, you know, not those two ladies in general, but just our thoughts on just the overall outcome of, um, of this trial as well as discuss, um, you know, what, some people are now labeling it as new media um, versus versus traditional conservative journalism. And uh, what does that look like, you know, kind of going forward? So just to recap here, let's see, what did I pull up? Uh, so I found this article. I have not been keeping up with this, you know, with the whole thing, just kind of like um, paying attention to who's saying what on the internet and watching a million YouTube videos. I just kind of go from here and there and, you know, I'll, I'll catch stuff and catch clips and um, figure out what's been going on. So um, basically this week on Monday, um, the, <clears throat> the courts, basically um, the trial came back uh, with a liable verdict. We wouldn't, we wouldn't label it as being a criminal. I mean, a guilty verdict in this case, because this was not a criminal trial. So we are, um, the jury, the jury voted liable, um, on our, oh, excuse me, on all counts, uh, for Tasha K. Um, Tasha K and her company, I believe it's either Kibi or Kebe studios. Um, they were ordered to pay, um, and they were ordered to pay, let's see, in total 3.8 million dollars um initially it was i believe 1.2 um but then they had to come back the next day to court um to finalize what the overall um total is going to be um and damages punitive damages that she'll have to pay so it, she was ordered to pay an additional 500,000 to reimburse Cardi B's legal fees, uh, which in total, her legal fees total up to $1.3 million. And then as well, um, then the addition of $1.25 million was added for punitive damages, which comes up to a total of $3.8 million. But if you have an accounting background, um, if you have an accounting background like I do, hey, 3.8, 3.8 is four. <laughs> I'm saying like two hundred thousand. That two hundred thousand difference don't even make it. You know, it don't. It don't even matter in this case because three point eight is four million dollars either way you look at it. But it is too much. But let me just go through. For those of you that's not familiar um, with this case, so I just wanted to kind of. <clears throat> give everybody a recap a short version of it so basically for several years um several years uh tasha k tasha k is a youtube blogger and she had been she's known for salacious news uh, so if you think about um like the National Enquirer. Remember those little newspapers we would get at the grocery store uh, back yeah. in the day if you just wanted some hot Hollywood tea that ain't necessarily, you know, it's it, you don't know whether or not it's true or not. You just wanted the tea on it. Um, or let's see, a more urban um, equivalent would be like a media takeout. Remember that website people would go to and they would always have just made up news on it as well. So when you think about um, YouTuber Tasha K, she's kind of built her platform and she, you know, had garnered over a million um, subscribers uh, to the platform, of course, have made millions of dollars in these last. I believe she may have been um, been doing YouTube videos for about 10 years, I, I think she said. Um, but I'll say within the last maybe four, 
no, nah, I'll say maybe five or six years. She really had been gaining more, you know, popularity, but she's known for salacious news. So basically what happened was she was told some inf- some su- some supposed truthful information about Cardi B and basically um, a health concern. Um, it was herpes, right? That was the thing. So she basically took some hearsay from somebody else, began to make videos um, about Cardi B, having her YouTube videos be um, titled with clickbait click bait titles and everything. And um, basically, you know, in, in so many words, just said, you know, Cardi B has, has herpes or blah, 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 blah. Cardi B then, Cardi B then, you know, was asking her was getting frustrated with that because she was pushing out this false news and was asking her to take the videos down. You know, she was being kind, like, Hey, please take the videos down. It's a lie. I can prove them as being a lie. Please take them down. Tasha never took them down. Of course, you know, kind of why would she take them down if she's making a lot of money, you know, having these videos up and this garnering millions of views on them then why would she take them down? Cardi B, Cardi B even went to the extent of having attorneys send cease and desist letters letters to um, Tasha K. Tasha K. At one point, got on video and said that I'll wipe my ass with these cease and desist letters. <laughs> <laughs> cease and desist letters, and she Ooh. tore it up, and you know. And, you know, she was like, no, I'm still not taking them down. So I guess Cardi B said, OK, well, OK, I'm I, I'm about to really show you. We're going to take this thing to court now. <clears throat> so here comes this this lawsuit. Cardi B was suing her. Then Tasha K um, at some point countersued, but they ended up throwing the countersuit out. Now, word on the street is that. Um, Tasha K was actually offered a settlement where she could have took a settlement offer earlier on. And that may have been a couple hundred thousand dollars. She could have took a settlement and then, you know, of course, deleted those videos, those, those specific cardio, uh, Cardi videos off her YouTube channel. And that would have been that, you know, both of them would have been on their merry way. However, um, Tasha K, you know, continuing to grow her platform. She probably has, you know, dreams of being the next Wendy Williams or someone of that nature. She's she's thinking of this opportunity as, OK, this is the opportunity for me to capitalize, um, capitalize, you know, of course, not only off of my name and the hard work that, of course, Tasha has put in, you know, to build her brand. But, hey, I have this super global, you know, celebrity that has all of this clout you know right i can kind of maybe use this opportunity to continue to help grow my platform to to become a household name um so so t- when she sued me i could have the money to pay her <laughs> right 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 <laughs> so um so she didn't she never took she didn't take the settlement money and then they continued on until they, you know, had this trial here in federal court, which they have been um, kind of dealing with with the, in the past, you know, for the past two or three years. And it finally boiled down to these last two, three weeks uh, with the trial. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, Tasha K just came out last in this situation and now is ordered to pay $3.8 million. Now, what a lot of people thought, was going to happen and you know a lot of people believe should have happened is that when Tasha K made her statement you would think that maybe she'll have some some sense of accountability um maybe some level of remorse um apologetic you know being apologetic to to Cardi um uh, for just kind of spreading these false rumors and lies about um, her health status and everything but no that didn't happen what do you think i'll say it again i'll do it again (laughs) (laughs) that's what you think 
you still got them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's what she said. Right. So, basically, that's kind of what happened. Tasha K made a video. Um, She had announced it. Mind you, since the verdict has been read and she's been told how much she um has to pay, pay Cardi, she still have been on social media. I mean, she, she don't give a fuck. And making posts and everything. Yeah, she clearly don't give a fuck. So yeah, she, she was like, y'all want me to pay? I'm really going <laughs> to say what the fuck I really want to say that. Right. So she went, like I said, she announced that she was going to make her official statement. Um, She was not going to go to any other media platform but her own on her YouTube channel and uh, make a statement. So she she did that. She, she made her statement. And uh, here's some of the things that she said. I'll read a little bit from this. Um, I'm looking at this page six article. Um, she said the last four years fighting this conspiracy case have been extremely challenging. The verdict handed, handed down on Monday was no shock to myself, my husband, or my legal team. We called bluff against against a machine that wanted to bully me for not wavering my personal beliefs. Um, she continued a machine that has corporate interests to protect prostitution, drug use, promiscuity, and to glorify the violence that wreaks havoc in our society and, and in our neighborhood. Later, she claimed in the video, um, said the machine threatened her life, calling the verdict extremely prejudic uh, prejudicial. Lord, I can't talk today. Based solely off sympathy and payola, Kibi stated, and Kibi is her last name, by the way, said the trial made me out to be an angry and malicious woman. Um, and repeatedly invoked her First Amendment rights. Um, I don't know what word that is that they put in there. Positing at one point or posing at one point. My case will set a precedent for all future media. There was no defamation, no invasion of privacy, and suicidal thoughts. Because remember in the trial, um, Cardi basically had a therapist come up there um, who testified on her behalf that she had basically in the last two, three years have been suffering from deep depression. She even thought about, you know, suicide and everything having to deal with. Remind you, she she still Cardi B had just maybe had a baby. So she was kind of dealing with that as well. <clears throat> so Cardi B went there. She, yeah, Cardi B went there. She had, you know, she went to a therapist and everything, um, which, of course, you know, that's part of the um, amount that a part of the medical expenses that um, Tasha has to pay for as well. So that's why she brought up that point about suicidal thoughts, um, <clears throat> just referencing, you know, Cardi's testimony on that because she said Cardi has stated that this whole ordeal basically um, took her to a dark place mentally. And Kiwi, right, and Kiwi continued to say in the video, um, let's see, and we proved that with sufficient factual evidence without specifying exactly what that was. We will fight no matter the cost or length, even if it takes years. Um, she added that all the way up to the Supreme Court, if need be. Um, she said also that while the court did not ask her to remove the videos um, that were part of the trial, she did so anyway to show good faith to the courts. So that's kind of the gist of what her official statement um, video was was all about. Um, Tasha K and Cardi will be back um, in court, I believe, the end of February or March. They have to go back. Um, <clears throat> I forgot what they need to go back for, but they got to go back to court. So with Tasha K making these statements, basically saying this machine, we don't know if the machine mean the justice system or the machine mean the entertainment industry, you know, behind Cardi. But basically she's still kind of throwing shots. She's being, you know, she's being slick with it, but she's still kind of throwing shots their way. So I don't know if, 
the judge and everybody may view these videos and these other like social media posts that she's been putting up and it may not work in her favor. Like they may increase her amount of money that she has to pay Cardi. Yeah, because she said the machine threatened my life, but she ever did it, don't care. <laughs> she, she tells everybody the machine did this, the machine did that. Right. Call their name. Right. Right. She gonna have to she gonna have to put some names on it. She gonna have to add some names on it. Because she can't vaguely just say this machine when yeah, you just have to if my thing is this, just um and you know, let's go into the bigger picture because you know, our time is ticking here. The bigger picture. If you're gonna be a woman And you're going to, you know, kind of stand on the fact that, hey, I'm strong in this. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to take it all the way and, 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 and stand up against um, what you're calling as a machine or Cardi B or whoever the case is. You know, you need to stand on it all the way. Like, don't be a half ass in the situation. Right. If you gonna go down, you better go down fighting all the way. If you need to call names, you need to call names. Put a name on it. Will. You might as well. You might as well. So that's how you know. A lot of times, people be full of shit, man. <laughs> she sound like she want on. <clears throat> but my thing about the whole situation. What she do other than blog? Where's she gonna get that money from? I don't know because today, uh, one of her sponsor, corporate sponsors, this company called Scentbird, they send like perfumes out. They're a pretty big company. Um, they just they tweeted responded to somebody comment and said that her con- Tasha K contract is going to be up. Um, it's going to be um, expired, I think, in April or March, and they do not plan on hiring her back. So she's it, it's affecting her. Like she's losing, she's losing um, viewers, uh, subscribers from her YouTube channel. She was at a, over a million. Now I think she's under a million um, followers. Um, like I said, losing sponsorships. So this could, def- you know. C- you know, I'm I, I'm not the type. I told you that's what was gonna happen. Right. I don't like to kick people down, especially not no black woman such as myself. Um, I like to see all women. You know, I am an advocate for women. I I would even go to the extent of calling myself a feminist, um, because I just stand up for women's rights all the way. So I don't want to necessarily you know kick someone while they're down. However, we have to be we have to be cognizant of the things that we spew out of our mouths, especially when we have these large platforms. It's like there is a way to kind of play the game, but play it in a way to where you still staying true to who you are, but at the same time doing, you know, doing just enough, you know, that'll be able to take you to that next level. It was all she, I think that, I think that if Tasha would have made her statement and would, would have given it didn't necessarily have to be a direct apology to Cardi B, but just kind of show some some sense of accountability because she even lied on the stage. She lied multiple times through the trial. So it's like now you're trying to act as though you this victim all of a sudden. It's it's just crazy when we seen you not only lie about Cardi on these old videos, but you even lying to it in front of a judge and a jury in a trial, a federal trial. So it's like she's at some point you need to take accountability and be serious you know it's almost like she just don't yeah she's playing i just hope you know like i said i hope i don't like to kick nobody down i don't know these people i don't know cardi i don't know tasha i'm just you know we're just speaking from a perspective on the outside looking in um but from as a woman as a black woman who you know just try to strive every day to better themselves and be you know be successful in life and and everything it's just ways to do things and i just think that it could have been handled um differently but if she does plan to continue to fight this um i would definitely suggest that she hire new attorneys because her attorneys were her attorneys practice criminal law they don't practice like entertainment 
law or libel defamation suits and stuff like that. So her attorneys that she utilized just were not prepared enough, you know, to go against Cardi B and her team. You know, of course, Cardi B paid for the best of the best. Right. On her attorneys. And so Tasha need to just give it to get it together. All right. She got to do better. Definitely got to do better, but we don't want to make this podcast too, too long. So we're going to, speaking of justice system, we're going to get ready to wrap this thing on up. Uh, speaking of the justice system, what did you have to say about Joe Biden? You said you found some news. Oh, yeah, old man <laughs> Joe. He finally going to be able, he finally going to get a chance to, um, get one of the, the pledges he made to the American citizens, one of his promises, he probably got a good chance of, uh, of making one of them come true by um, Stephen Brown, the justice, mm-hmm. Supreme Court. He's, he said that on the other day he finna retire. Oh, and okay. Man, and Joe and his team, they promised us that he was going to get the first black female justice. He was gonna put in. Mm. Well, yeah. I think it's time for it. What you think? I think he should do it, but I don't think he should just tell everybody this is who I'm gonna get, and I ain't even finna think about nobody else. You know, that's that's where he getting the backlash from. Mm. He getting the backlash because he said he want a black female, and he ain't thinking about nobody else. Now I want him to get the black female, right? But I think. He shouldn't have just came out and said that with like black female and no other option. Right. Okay. I got it. What it what does the saying go? Don't show your cards before playing your hand or something like that. That's kind of what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. See, because he could have just left the door open and still did what he wanted to do. Right. Instead of just it with the without the backlash. Right. You know, now he's finna get some backlash because they're gonna Well, he like, just trying gonna, to consider. Yeah, but I mean, okay. Think of Trump. Do you think Trump would have gave a damn either? He would have said he said who he wanted. So maybe that's just a thing now with the new presidents. They just kind of do what they want to do, say what they want to say. You know, they gonna get their way. They right, regardless. So I was looking up here. I was trying to see. I was thinking of like how many um how many women we've had on the um on the Supreme Court uh, seat. So it looks like we had, we got three currently. We have Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, and Amy Connie Barrett. And then I believe um, the other woman that's retired now, that was uh, Sandra Day O'Connor. She actually retired in 2006. So as far as like, you know, from a, a female standpoint, we've never had we've never had um, an African American female to sit um, on the justices' seat. However, we have had women, and I be, I want to say Elena Kagan is a minority. So that's good, and then we have Clarence Thomas. So I, and you know. Yeah, I I mean, shit, I think it's time. Not even that. I would go as far as saying maybe an eight, you know, somebody of Asian descent as well could be. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's that day and time, man. It's just the world and, and, and the United States is just too diverse for us to to not inc- not be, you know, champions of diversity from a federal level you know yeah that's another that's another day yeah that's another topic (laughs) so we we almost had 40 minutes on this thing i didn't think the tasha k thing was gonna take that long to talk about but whatever (laughs) we have we have another podcast coming so to wrap it up um wrap it up you know as always you guys we appreciate you tuning in um you can stay tuned for episode four 
Um, as always, please continue to follow us. Um, follow us and subscribe to our channel. Um, we're streaming on all social media platforms. Um, social media and streaming platforms. Spotify, Amazon Music, Amazon iTunes, Podcasts, Audible. You can find us Apple Podcasts. You can find us everywhere Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, even. Yeah, follow us on TikTok as well. Um, yeah, so until next time, you guys, we'll see y'all later. Peace out.